What is going on, guys? Welcome back. Sunday night showdown here between the Packers and the Bears. This is Hold the Door DFS. I am super excited for another showdown slate. Uh, we're going to have uh, three primetime slates, you know, assuming we get the Ravens and the Steelers on Tuesday night. So be on the lookout for content for tomorrow night's game and Tuesday night's game. Uh, again, we greatly appreciate all the support you guys are giving to our channel. Um, in, in way less than a year, we're already up over 1,200 subscribers, and we, we're just super pumped. We're, we're grateful for all the support, and we hope to continue to grow uh, as well. So hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Uh, just a one quick shout out to our uh, FSI team, uh, Jay Scott with a $20,000 takedown, our tennis coach, um, with the phenomenal content from uh, Keith Gator Guy. Uh, for college football, who's been putting out college football content on our YouTube channel all season. So uh, make sure to uh, check us out for all those types of things, and, and especially niche sports, you know, all these crazy little small slates, there is big money to be won. So let's get into the slate. Um, of course, the biggest news here, uh, Nick Foles is likely inactive, uh, which brings on Mitch Trubis Mitch Trubisky back into the picture. Um, the cow or we sorry not the cowboys the packers are an eight point favorite here um which isn't really to anybody's surprise I, I think this is going to be a little bit stiffer defensive test for the packers that they haven't faced yet but i do think um in a game where you know you have trubisky coming back in i, I don't think that makes anything really better for the bears at, at least from you know the rest of their skill players perspective david montgomery is back um Valdez Scantling is questionable. So that'll be the big injury news to target, but Lazard is not that cheap either. So we'll, we'll get into that, but all right, let's get into our slate again. I'm going to use the three, two, one format. So uh, three of my favorite cash plays, two of my favorite values and my fade. So uh, let's start with the Packers first. And I'm just going to sort by the Packers just so uh, it's easier for you to, uh, as you're watching um, Devonte Adams, 12,600. This, this is, you know, top five, one of the hardest matchups he's going to get, but, uh, you know, the bears pass defense is pretty good, but I don't think that's enough to get you off, you know, one of the best receivers in the league. So, uh, 12,600 is a steep price to pay. And, and I do think this kind of feels like a KC slate in a little bit, because I think, Devonte Adams, Rodgers, and Aaron Jones are all really good, and, and and their floors are 15 points. So, you know, I think KC has more upside, and there's more scoring going to happen in that game. So, you missing out on like the 27 point Kelsey. I don't think you're going to miss out on the 27 point Aaron Jones if you fade him, but you're likely going to miss out on you know 15 to 20 points, where if you might not make that up somewhere else. So. Uh, relative to the slate, I, th I think you're going to easily be able to get two of those guys. Uh, if you're going to go all three, then uh, you'll likely have to do more punting, uh, maybe maybe a cheaper captain, or just completely fade the Bears, which is, is totally fine too. So Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams, I think will be the two most popular plays on the slate. And I think, um, honestly, I, I kind of like using Aaron Rodgers in the captain spot as just a little bit of a discount. Uh, to Devonta Adams, if I need that little discount, um, or even Aaron Jones, if, if you're going to play all three. So to no one's surprise, Adams and Rodgers are, are two of my favorite plays on the entire slate. Aaron Jones is probably a close third. Um, you know, it's just, it's amazing. Like you think the matchups or the touches are split or something. He always gets there. You know, Aaron, Aaron Rodgers loves throwing short to Aaron Jones. He, how many times has he run that wheel route? where he can actually, you know, he hasn't caught a touchdown in a while to this year, but he gets targeted, you know, like, look at this four, six, five. And obviously he's catching most of them because they're short balls, but you know, they want, they, they want to get him the ball. So Aaron Jones clearly in play. I, I like him uh, more than uh, David Montgomery, obviously Montgomery, you're looking at almost a $2,000 savings. So I think you figure that into it, but uh, definitely in a vacuum, I prefer Aaron Jones. Valdez Scantling, questionable. Uh, we don't really, I haven't even heard, you know, it's Sunday when I'm recording this. I still don't even know. I haven't heard any other news. Um, both of them feel a little bit overpriced for a wide receiver two, three. Now, if Scantling is out, then obviously, you know, they're not competing. And then that, you know, bumps up Lazard, who I think his first week back was last week. 
Otherwise, uh, Tanyan at tight end, I like for a more of a discount and a better matchup. Uh, you know, Chicago's not as good against the tight ends. Um, and then also, depending on if St. Brown's active, he could be uh, a viable punt. I was, you know, he's been like 200 bucks every slate and now he's 2000. So I think they were kind of figuring in uh, Scantling possibly missing, which is unfortunate because we usually like to catch them uh, sleeping on some of that injury news. So Obviously, Crosby is in play. Uh, Crosby is, you know, it, 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 he's fine. Uh, obviously, Green Bay, I think, likes to go for it more than other teams, which, but also they have the ability to score. So this does feel like a game where you could definitely use uh, both kickers. Now, my favorite value here still, and I still, still think he's pretty underpriced, is uh, Jamal Williams. Um, even after coming back, obviously weeks eight, seven and eight without Aaron Jones, he was phenomenal back with Aaron Jones, still splitting touches. You know, he's just, you know, he, the receiving touchdown really saved him last week, but, you know, I think still in other game scripts, you know, you, you're just still going to see like a five to six point floor. Now, 3,400, I think you're looking for more upside maybe compared to, you know, Crosby or uh, the kicker for Chicago. So I think that's kind of where you make a decision. I, I think point per dollar though, you can't really argue, you know, Jamal Williams a ton. Uh, you know, Mercedes Lewis, if he catches a pass, he hits value. If he doesn't get targeted the whole game, don't be surprised. So the value is not that great here for the Packers. You know, it would be Jamal Williams and Crosby. Um, Sternberger, I guess is fine, 2,200. Again, if you can get up to the kicker, I think it's safer and actually has more upside. So that's the Packers side. Let's go to Chicago. Um, Allen Robinson, 10,000, the most expensive player on the slate. Another guy that, like, no matter the matchup, seems to get there. As he, I don't think he, he's had one game under double digits. You know, even against the Vikings, um, you know, he just – he wasn't that great, but he got to double digits. And the targets are always there. Nine targets, nine targets, seven targets, four targets. Obviously, the four targets wasn't that much, but, um, you know, he definitely is a target hog. Uh, so I think he is definitely in play. Can I play him over Aaron Jones? Ah, that's tough. I, I think I prefer Jones. I think it's just safer plus more upside. We know Aaron Jones has massive upside, so that's not really. But if, if you're trying to uh, spread out some of your ownership and not be so Packer heavy, I get it. Uh, Trubisky. Okay, let, let, let's think about Trubisky's skill set here. Obviously, he really struggled to throw the ball this year, um, but he can use his legs. And I think he will use that to his advantage when he needs to. Do I think he's going to get a rushing touchdown? No, but I do think that, um, you know, 15 point, 10 to 15 points is probably viable. And I think, you know, if you go down from Aaron Jones to Trubisky because you want just a safer floor play, I think that's viable. Um, I don't, it's not a great matchup. It's on the road. It's a quarterback who hasn't played for a while. So I, I, I don't know, like take, take it what you wish. But I mean, I think that whole Aaron Robinson or Allen Robinson, Trubisky, Aaron Jones, Montgomery here, you know, even Montgomery, who's obviously has a little bit better matchup um, can definitely get there too. Cause when he has been the lead back and he's actually catching balls out of the backfield, he can get there. Uh, you know, you're almost, I, I don't know. I, I lean Trubisky over Montgomery. I think Trubisky and Robinson project really closely. So I'll take the savings on Trubisky. So then it's more of, do I'd rather go to Aaron Jones at 10-4 or go down to Trubisky at 9-2? That's more of um, maybe projecting five points difference for, you know, you know, maybe three to five points difference for like 1200 bucks. So I kind of kind of make your decision there. All right, let's continue on with Chicago here. Jimmy Graham, 5,200, blah, pass. Mooney, 4,800. He's just sometimes like a flash in the pan. Like just, you know, last week, you know, goes from 11 targets to two. You know, I, I think the targets are going to get back more to the median of like five or six. So, you know, if he gets something like that, I think he can pay off the 4,800 price tag. Uh, 4,400 for CPAT uh, with Montgomery back. That's kind of a pass for me. Um, Santos 3,600. That's what I'm saying. I think he's a better option as a kicker than playing maybe Jamal Williams, unless you want the upside. Um, Miller at 3,000 is really intriguing. 
I think he might be one of the better values on the entire slate as well. Uh, seven targets last game, eight targets. He had a couple of drops. I know it was a big drops last game. So 11 targets, you know, you're looking at a guy who's potentially getting, you know, seven to 10 targets a game for 3000. I think he's probably the best value on the slate. You know, you can make a case for the bears D, you know, if it's a low scoring game, but you know, not something that I'm really looking at. Uh, the rest down here is kind of a pass for me. So uh, let's look at the slate overall. Uh, my three favorite cash plays are going to go Devonta Adams, Rogers, and then choosing likely for me between Aaron Jones and Trubisky. Uh, you know, Trubisky, just because I, I think there is a floor, you know, it's, maybe it's just my cashy mindset coming into it. You know, obviously, if you play Trubisky, you actually might want to play Robinson to correlate in GPPs, but um, that's kind of where I'm going. Um, I'm really fading the, you know, the Bears kind of in general, but um, obviously, I, you know, I'm just not really thrilled about this whole Scantling Lazard. If Scantling's out, I'm not like just going to immediately pivot to Lazard. So I, I don't, don't know that I'll fall in that price range on this slate. Um, so I'm just kind of fading any passing target, any receiver likely for the Packers other than Adams and then maybe consider Tanyan. Uh, the favorite values on the slate, Anthony Miller. Uh, Jamal Williams and the both of the kickers. I think Sternberg at 2200 is also viable. Um, but I think I think there's more safety in like Miller's targets, Jamal Williams touches and both the kickers. So uh, again, I think if you start building, you know, build with, build with who you want as your core players and then, and then fill in the gaps. But you should never, one, one mistake that I see a lot of people make is like the last guy in, you love the rest of your lineup and you just put the last guy in, even if he's not a great play, just because it's, it's the last guy in, like it just doesn't fit. You need to make sure you like the, the construction of your build. You should never feel like one spot is just bad because you love the rest. Usually that doesn't turn out very well. So uh, give this video a like, hit a subscribe button, greatly appreciated. Uh, be on the lookout for more content from FSI for NFL, soccer, and everything else in between. Thanks a lot. Have a good one.